This FAQ Monday is sponsored by Storyblocks Audio. Well, hello, and welcome to another FAQ Monday. I'm your host, Fluff, and I'm treating myself today to an almond milk frap, a little frap action. This is vanilla. I'm not sure how I feel about the vanilla. Normally, I'm a mocha kind of guy, but, you know, it was on sale. Two for four bucks. I mean, yeah, sign me up. What's your take on Carrie King leaving BC Rich for Dean? The hotly debated topic of why Carrie King went to Dean and all the speculation, is it a money grab, etc., etc. Well, I mean, you know, whenever anyone switches companies for another signature thing, of course money is an element that I'm sure Carrie is thinking about with the imminent retirement of Slayer, although they've been saying they're gonna retire for several years now and the farewell tour is just gonna literally go on forever at this point. However, my rumor friends, my birdies in high places told me that BC Rich owes carry a lot of money from royalties that they have not given him. Now that is just rumors. I have no way to substantiate that. And those are just the things that I heard. I wanna be very clear about that. I'm not saying that's a factual statement. I'm telling you guys what I heard. So that's what I heard. And if that is the case, he has every reason to jump on over to another company that's going to support him and make the guitars that he wants to play. And in that case, yeah, more power to him. He should leave them, if that's the case. I don't know if that's the case, but that's what I hear it is. Top five Riff Masters? Oof, um, let's see. Riff, okay, I mean, Tony Iommi, Black Sabbath, I have to list him. Jerry Cantrell, Riff Masters. Kirk Weinstein, from Crowbar and Down. Um, let's see, that's three, four riffs. Who do I think of uh, writing riffs? I mean, I would put I would put Bill Kelleher up there with the Riff Riders. And maybe, there's so many, I don't know. Dimebag Daryl, I love his riffs as well. All of those guys can hang in the same group as far as I'm concerned. Very diverse riffs, but Riff Masters, none the, none the least. I wouldn't say those are my all-time favorite top five Riff Masters, but you put me on the spot here, so yeah. Tony Iommi, Jerry Cantrell, Kirk Weinstein, Bill Kelleher, and Dimebag Girl. Five Riff Masters. Do you need a random sound effect or a sound buy or some ambient noise for your bar scene that you're filming or want to simulate on the intro to your new hardcore album? I don't know why you'd want to do that, but maybe you do. Well, Storyblocks Audio can help. Get unlimited downloads from studio quality audio clips, loops, music tracks, and sound effects with a membership to Storyblocks Audio. Now, everything on there is royalty free, so feel free to just spread those clips and the Foley and the music all over your stuff without any worry of any hassle. It's all good, use away. Now, whenever I'm being creative, and I'm putting together some kind of a commercial or something like that for a client, and I am looking for something very specific, I have never had any problems not being able to find it on Storyblocks Audio. They literally have everything. Winks, table sounds, clocks, jets going overhead, it's all there. If you would like to up your game, I will link down below in the description to storyblocks.com slash riffs and beards, and you can just go nuts, really. You can just, the world is yours at Storyblocks Audio. Saw that you purchased the 60s Gibson Les Paul Standard. How's the gold top been? It's been good. Um, this one came directly from the Gibson factory, so it was not QC'd by the guitar store. However, um, I had something interesting happen with the gold top. Now, I will emphasize that out of the box, it played great, it sounds great, it just, it feels good. However, after a few days of owning it, it developed this really weird buzzing in the high E string and in all fretted positions, it sounded like a sitar, if that makes any sense. So normally, if it only happens in the open position, you have kind of a nut issue or break angle issue or something like that. 
that was not the case. The fretwork is good. The nut work is good. As funny as that sounds. I would change the strings and it would go away for a few days and then it would return. And I thought that is the strangest thing I've seen in a long time on a guitar. I've never run into that problem. Well, I changed out the bridge for, I don't know if you guys can see this, a locking tone pros bridge. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, when I took the bridge off of the 50s gold top, I was not aware that this is a Tone Pros bridge as well. This is not a Gibson bridge. This is a Tone Pros AVR2, which is a non-locking vintage style bridge. I don't know, I think it's the saddle material. I got some bum saddle material or something, or maybe the slotting, the slotting looks fine. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the problem was, but changing the bridge alleviated everything and it sings and it's just a wonderful, wonderful guitar. However, I did have to change out the bridge because this Tone Pros seemed to be a bum bridge. I don't know if that's a thing or not. It's not really on Gibson because when you would put a new pair of strings on, it would be fine for a few days. I don't know. I don't know what the deal, <laughs> maybe some, some of you can tell me, but changing out the bridge fixed all of the problems. So other than that, this guitar has been incredible and I love it and I've already dinged it up a little bit by traveling with it a little bit. But uh, yeah, Gold Top's good. So how much did it hurt to have to use Reaper in your How To Record series? So for those of you who don't know, I did a recording course for beginners called the Complete Beginner's Guide to Recording Rock and Metal with Unstoppable Recording Machine and URM Academy. And in that we use inexpensive plugins and or free software which meant I had to use Reaper for the whole thing and I hated it. If, uh, okay, so uh, I did it uh, with Finn from Punk Rock NBA and he can tell you that I, uh, I was drug kicking and screaming in that situation. I didn't want to use Reaper at all. I didn't, uh, yeah. I haven't been in Reaper in like seven or eight years at this point and going back to it after so long was interesting. They have changed and updated a lot of things that just simply weren't a part of Reaper when I was in it. The last time I used Reaper was, I believe it was Reaper 3.1 had just come out. And um, yeah, it was interesting. I, I still don't like Reaper. I am not a fan of Reaper, however, I will recognize that being full featured and very inexpensive is a huge asset to people first starting out learning how to record. And it is great for that. That's what I used it for myself. And then I eventually moved on to adult DAWs. Leave hate comments down below. Anyway, yeah, it was interesting and it was humbling and I got through it, it's fine. But you know, the right clicking stuff and the, the names, effects instead of plugins, et cetera, et cetera. Quirky, the UI is terrible. I don't like it. Sorry, I hate Reaper. I'm curious why you keep mentioning that acoustic treatment panels don't actually do anything. Care to elaborate? So in the Rate of Roast series, I often roast people who have those really cheap foam square tiles that you can buy a hundred pack of on Amazon or eBay for 50 bucks. Those are the ones like these. These don't do hardly anything. Yeah, they may calm down some high, top, like top end and high frequency flutter, maybe a little bit of high frequency reflections. However, you are likely doing more harm than good by smearing other frequencies and just getting not an accurate image if you are at, in your listening environment. Those little cheap tiles don't do much sound wise. That's, that's all I meant by that. That's a fact, like that's, there's no argument there. Like they don't, a lot of people put them on the walls, not, you know, assuming they're doing more than they are actually doing, right? So in that, that's why I always say they don't do anything. Yeah, they do a little bit of something, but honestly, the juice is not worth the squeeze in that situation. You're better off going and getting some rock wool and building your own gobos and stuff like that. 
that's what I meant. I am guilty of this myself. Back in the day, I had those on the back of my closet. And if you guys remember, you uh, you OG viewers, I used to turn the corner tile to make everyone mad so the pattern wouldn't match and everyone's OCD would just go off the scales. Remember those days? Those were good days, kind of, not really. But uh, yeah, I'm guilty of it myself. I did it once upon a time too. But uh, yeah, those don't do anything. They just, and they look shot as well. Sorry. What is your favorite corn album? You know, I'm not sure if it's for sentimental reasons or the fact that I think the songs are the best, but the first corn album for me will always be the king of all corn albums. This is where it all started. I saw them at the Moore Theater in Seattle, Washington in 1995, and it was their, I believe at the time, uh, Jonathan had said, I remember him saying it was their second headline tour. And it was an incredible. There were dolls everywhere, and they were still in their overalls, their one, you know, like their jumpsuits, their like uh, mechanics coveralls. They looked exactly how they looked in the blind video, and it was amazing. And Chino from Deftones came out and sang with them, and no one really knew who the Deftones were, so everyone was just kind of like, "This guy that sounds like a cat, what is he doing?" So. Um, I have fond memories of that time and of that album, and I used to obsessively listen to that album along with everybody else. And uh, I just think that album really captured a moment in time and therefore is my favorite Korn album. However, the newest album is incredible. The album's out, yeah? Yeah, the song, yeah, the album's out. Yeah, the new stuff is also really, really good. It reminds me and has the spirit of the older stuff, but yeah. Self-titled, then Life is Peachy was awesome, and then The Father the Leader was awesome. Oh, they have a lot of good albums, though. And now, Fluff reads a tweet. Mountains aren't just funny, they are hilarious. Hilarious? Hilarious. Suggestion of the week. My suggestion to you this week is to check out the new Counterparts album, There Is Nothing Left To Love. I really like Counterparts. I think Brandon is one of the best vocalists in the game. And if you're a fan of amazing riffs and just brutal break that just it's just really good. Just go listen to it. That's, that's all I can really say. All the pickable links down below in the description. You've been wonderful. I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Wow, another video gone by. Hope it was pretty good. I mean, it was probably pretty good. But if it wasn't, <laughs> awkward, right?